All right. For those who don't know, when it comes to physical books outside of manga and light novels and stuff like that, I'm near exclusively a horror thriller re reader. I'll dabble into urban fantasy classics and stuff like that. But in terms of romance, I'm pretty sure the last romance that I read was uh, Twilight in high school, which I, re I reread not long ago. Um, I have read something that was a World War II story, might have been World War I, can't remember. The lady was wearing a pink coat on the cover. And the reason I picked this one up was because it was told from the point of view of Greek gods. So that got me to read that. I enjoyed that one. Um, and that Stephen King book where he goes back in time to try to uh, stop the assassination of JFK. Because that was, that was a romance story. I, entirely romance. I have it shelved on as romance. So that's my, the extent of my romance knowledge when it comes to literature. So I figured for February and Valentine's Day leading up to it, I'd read a couple romance books. Why I decide to do this, I don't know. I guess to see if I like the genre. So I picked up uh, a couple, just like I did with my extreme horror dabbling. I got one that is, that is a romance. Uh, one that's a little bit more my vibe and like different levels of romance to the story. So the first one I picked up was um, the Chris. which is a I would assume you'd classify this as a dark romance. She is a serial killer and she falls in love with an FBI agent who is trying to hunt her down. This is the first in a five book series, I think. And I'm like, okay, there's a genuinely good chance that I'm going to enjoy this one. I've started to read a lot of manga, so I figured, hey, why don't we pick up a graphic novel? I've seen Heartstopper floating around everywhere, so pick that up. Not sure how much of my vibe it'll be, but I picked it up. Uh, then I picked up uh, the Colleen Coover one that I don't hear good things about her or her writing or anything, but I'm like, I got to form my own opinion. So um, It Ends With Us was pretty much the most popular, most recommended, even people who don't like her say, yeah, this is the best book that she's written. And the final book I picked up on a whim was just The Donut Trap, because it seems like your classic romance, girls home from college, save a small family business, and um, falls in love along the way. So those are the books that I have been reading for the past two weeks. And it surprisingly went very well. Um, starting with the, um, The Wrist, which I believe is part of the Mindfuck series. The cover is terrible, by the way. Um, I actually really like this one starting off. So cut to past Jessica's first impressions. All right, I somehow made it, um, over halfway. Like, I got 75% through The Wrist without even realizing it. It is not well written. This is not a good book at all. But it is very entertaining. You have um, a serial killer who has fallen in love with an FBI agent. He doesn't know she's a serial killer. She does know he's an FBI agent. And he's one of the cases he's working is actually to track her down. And there's a long list of people who have harmed her on, I assume, a certain day. Just one incident that involved a lot of people. And she's hunting them down one by one. Um... Seems fair. I'm sure they deserved it. So. And yeah, that followed through pretty much the entire book. I I had a lot of fun. Is this well written? No. God, no. God, 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 no. Reads like pretty much bad Criminal Minds fan fiction. Uh, with exposition dumps, clunky, clunky writing, hammy dialogue, and just overall, like the dialogue is bad, especially when they're like profiling how people act because... The main guy, the FBI agent, is a profiler, and she knows people kind of thing and talks to him about profiling, and she profiles him and other people as well. Um, she's, But there's so much fun. This book has a lot of personality, and that's what I love, when I, whether it be manga or in the animes I watch or movies or books I'm reading. I want it to have a personality, and this is dripping with personality. It's over the top. They lean into the cheesy dialogue. Um, she's talking about painting walls red with the blood of the people that wronged her, and she is going after people who've done terrible, terrible, terrible things to her and her family in the past, and she's getting her revenge. She's finally ready to get her revenge. Meanwhile, he's hunting a different serial killer. He's mildly on her case as well, but the main focus at the time is a different serial killer who may or may not now be targeting his girlfriend, who is also a serial 
serial killer that he doesn't know about. And I'm definitely going to be reading the sequel. Um, this was genuinely a fun time. The romance element was definitely throughout it. They were flirting the entire book. Um, they were separated for enough time that when things did get physical, I don't understand um, a lot of the reviews saying this is... Erotica is the wrong word. It was like slightly above Fade to Black. Like um, I've, I've read more graphic fan fiction. This was on the low side. Um, same thing with the kills. Like people are like, oh no, your trigger warning's going in. I'm like, people need trigger warnings for this? Okay, I'm sure they do. Maybe it gets more graphic and violent in the later books because we don't know the full extent of what happened to her and her past. And I don't want to give away spoilers for what we do know from this book. But I can definitely tell it will become very traumatic. Um, but for the first book, it was on the mild side, both, uh, the violence and the romance subdued. So I, I, I had a lot of fun with this one. We'll be continuing. So this was the one that was the most my vibe, most likely for me to enjoy. Uh, and then I picked up a completely different vibe of Heartstopper. And I, I was shocked. Okay. The first book, definitely not for me, did not rate it on Goodreads. Second book, same thing. Did not rate it on Goodreads. It's a graphic novel. Barely anything happens in the first volume. Like, you need to give it a two or three to give it a fair chance. Um, it is a um, romance between two high school guys, and they're on the rugby team. One is openly out as gay, and he falls in love with um, his best friend, who he assumes is straight. But then it's just the first book. Uh, past Jessica can explain the uh, first impressions. Uh, the cat is not really letting me move. So I have finished volume one. It took all of, what, 30 minutes. Uh, cute art style, definitely not my normal vibe. Um, characters are fine. It's a lot of will they, won't they get together idiots falling in love who don't know that the, they're the only ones who don't know that they're in love with each other. There's not much plot at the moment. What do you think, Maven? Maven has no opinion. Yes. So the um, will they, won't they fall in love? It's We know they're going to get together. So it's just everyone knows that they are they want to get together, but they don't know that the other one likes them and yada yada goes from there. And they don't want to ruin the friendship. So that's the entirety of the first book. And then, spoilers, they get together because it's a five- Books or six books in the series right now. Um, the second book is the guy who, this is his first romance, realizing that he's attracted to a guy, coming to terms with what he identifies as, and it goes into uh, him being bisexual and realizing that part of his identity. Um, then you, and again, it's majority, it's just them making out on page. But again, not my vibe, didn't read down Goodreads, but it, while the first book, uh, the art style wasn't really for me, by the second one, the art style had grown on me. And I've slightly gotten in the habit of reading it in the right direction. Manga makes it hard to read other graphic novels from America but just, just because I'm reading it backwards. I keep flipping the page in the wrong direction or reading the panels in the wrong direction. Uh, by the second book, I got the hang of it. I had, I was happy enough to wait for the loan for my library to come in for the third book. Uh, and then I'm like, okay, this is, it's starting to pick up. We're starting to have a little bit more of a plot as we're diving more into, um, relationships between them, the other characters, their personalities coming more apparent. I'm invested in them being together and being happy. And they're slowly working out on how to come out to those around them. So they're gone on a trip to Paris with a school trip and they're telling their friends about their relationship. And I'm like, okay, okay. I'm still not rating any of this on Goodreads because they probably wouldn't have high rankings just because the plot and isn't there. And I like plots, but I'm starting to like the characters. So pretty good, pretty good. Fourth book, my God is incredible. Oh, sweet love of God, the third books, the emotions, in, or the fourth book, it made the emotions it made me feel. Going into eating disorders, anorexia, uh, and OCD, and just mental health in general. Um, oh, oh, yes, 100% invested in this relationship. Uh, the final book that is currently a fifth book in the series, or volume in the series, um, there's like a six-month wait on my uh, library, so I might actually have to buy it, but... No, this this was genuinely cute, and I was very, very much enjoying it by book four. 
Um, don't know if that's a good thing if it took me because it took me so long to get invested, but highly recommend if that's the series you're looking for. Um, a little cringy high school drama. Immature is the wrong word. They feel like teenagers. This is the type of situations that teenagers feel where emotions are heightened. Everything is over the top to them. Life or death situations, embarrassment. It It's genuine to the teenage experience and just being in love as a teenager. So not my immediate vibe, but it's accurate. It's so good. It's so good. And again, I did so well. Past Jessica did a good job with the donut trap, picking out this book on a whim from a random website, knew nothing about it. The cover is cute. I seen a donut. That is all I had. And oh my God, it was so good. It was cute. It was cute. Um, she is home from college and it's a lot of uh, finding one's purpose in life when you don't have a passion and you're like, I, I will settle for anything. I just have to get a job and get by but there's nothing that I have no dream to work towards because I'm not passionate about anything. And she is from a um, Cambodian uh, Chinese American family. Like she's a first generation. Her family had left Cambodia after during that genocide with Pol Pot. I hate. Oh my god. First learned about that when I was in Laos with a friend, and we heard because Cambodia is nearby. We heard about there, and then I picked up the book. First they killed my father. Oh my. God. God, that was irrelevant to the book and the story. But the point being, the parents came from that kind of background, have this trauma to it, and now they want a better life for their children. They're here, they've opened up a donut shop, they're working, they want security. That is the main thing that they want for a secure life for them and their children. And they're not good at communicating to their children. Their communication, different forms of how they express love is just lost between them. And it doesn't help that the children don't speak their language fluently. They're a mix of Cambodian, Chinese, Mandarin, um, and but primarily English. And they, the communication dif between generations and the expectations that parents put on their children. And oh, it was... Oh, the heart of this story was the family. And I love that. I love that so very much. Um, past Jessica was completely wrong with uh, some things that were going on in this book. So here's Past Jessica. All right, I'm about halfway through the book. I'm surprised that I'm actually mildly enjoying it or at least not wanting to turn it off. Though I do get a little bored and have to switch to um, a different just book in general that is not romance, but I, it's good. It is good. She likes baseball. I like baseball. We have about the same level of interest. Yes, this is entertaining, but we don't really follow it closely. And overall, barely know too much about it. But yeah, I in, enjoy it when it's in front of us. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I'm not like, there's very clearly going to be a love triangle. I don't like love triangles. That is going to annoy me. Um... So you got the one who's going to be the, who is the perfect boyfriend. She really likes him. Um, he learned, he learned English through uh, watching Friends on TV. I love that. I think he's Chinese. I know he spent a lot of time in China. Um, and again, her family is from Cambodia. And I got a feeling like the mother is going to absolutely love him. He's very stable career and yeah, yeah, checks off all the boxes. But the other one's a childhood friend who they kept their relationship secret because the protagonist didn't think the mom would support the relationship, only wanted her to be with someone of a similar culture. And I got a feeling because that's the plot line, I feel like the book is going to go in the direction of the high school sweethearts they were meant to be and they're going to get together. The other guy's really nice. I don't like love triangles. I really don't care. This is going to be weird for me to read. But yeah, that's, that's all I got so far. Uh, by the end, I did enjoy the romance. I It was great, a lesser part of what I enjoyed about this book. Um, but I kind of understand-ish why they had a love triangle. I would prefer no love triangle. That's something I'm always going to hate. But yeah, no, I'm genuinely surprised how much I enjoyed this one. Dialogue though. Dialogue, not so great. Kind of cringy. cringy. Uh, main character, drama queen all over the place. She's a mess, but you grow to love her. I I don't know why I thought that it'd be a good idea to form my own opinion on Holly Coover because if this is the best book that she's ever written, I'm 
I will never pick up another book by her. I should have started with Verity. That's like, because that's her thriller contribution. I should have went with that. But stupid Jessica wanted to try romance this month. Ridiculous. Um, I hate it. Every single page of this book to my very core. Let's get that out of the way. I own this book somewhere. I don't know where it is. I got it from a thrift store. I brought it into this house. I put it on my bookshelf. I'm sure of it. I remember doing it. And my apartment must have consumed it and yeeted it out of my apartment and just been like, no, you're not having this in this room, in this bookshelf. No, it's not staying here because I can't find it. I'm not going to look for it because if I find it, I'm throwing it out. Oh my God. I'm trying to be nice and thinking of one positive thing. And it's technically a spoiler, but I'm pretty sure everyone knows the plot of this book, the main point of it, the twist of this book. Um, because it's literally the only thing I knew about this book going in. And that is going to be that the central story relationship is based on a, is a domestic abuse relationship. She's being abused by her boyfriend, husband kind of thing. And it is depicted extremely, extremely, extremely well. Um, this is absolutely incredible for the depiction of domestic abuse what how people find themselves in that kind of situation why they don't just up and leave the first time he hits her oh I was in absolute shock like to my core that was a good scene that and then when he explain when the situation is presented and they're talking and he's apologizing it a hundred percent, if I was in that situation, I'd be like, okay, I understand this. This was just tempers were high. Moving forward, if it ever happens again, then you leave. And that's exactly what she says. She's like, if this happens again, I'm gone. And I'm like, yeah, I, I understand that. And then it just, it happens again. And excuses get made. The benchmark for what it will take to leave keeps getting moved to the point that it's just like, well, at least it's not as bad as last time. So I... The domestic abuse depiction in this book, I have no complaints. That is flawless. It is everything else I despise. I despise every character because they are just, they have no personality. They are the worst kind of character trope with no depth to them whatsoever. The main character, Lily Blossom Bloom, opens a flower shop and it's groundbreaking idea that she does anti-flowers. So blacks instead of pinks and make this one punk, whatever. Apparently that is revolutionary ideas. And she opens the shop, immediate success. Put her name in the newspaper for up and coming businesses in the area. I, 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 I hate it. Um, uh, the guy that she falls for, I don't know why. He's a neurosurgeon, so rich, so I get that. But that's that's all he's got going for him because he's creepy as hell. Like, he does something that I'm not... I don't feel like people who watch my channel is going to read this book, maybe. I don't know. If you want to skip a little bit ahead for the creepiest thing that I have ever read in fiction, um, it's going to be the fact that he takes a picture of them the night they meet. It's a shaky, shaky photo and so it's not very good. And he, he prints it off. Granted, they they have one interaction on a rooftop. And he prints off that photo, blows it up, sticks it on his wall. People think it's abstract art or something because it's so shaky. But he said she's the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. So he needed to have it on his wall, blown up to be the main point of art. And I'm just like, that is creepy as hell. His entire personality was I do not want a relationship. I just want to have sex and one night stands. And then he immediately falls in love with her to the point that he's like, I want a relationship with you. If the only way I can have you is be in a relationship, I need a relationship. Oh, I, I will sacrifice everything to make you happy. Like he, his personality does a complete switch to like the obsessive nature of him. And I hate everything about him. And she's obsessed that he wears scrubs. I, oh my god, don't know why I suffered through that entire book. If I didn't have the audiobook, I would have just tossed it 100%. I'm happy I did not pay money for the audiobook. Thank you, Scrib. All right, so I started off really, really, really good with my picks for the romance uh, ones because I enjoyed all the other books that I read. Um, Holly and Coover, no, not for me. I don't know if I need to read Verity just because she has a thriller book, but I probably won't. 
that that's all I got for this. I don't know if this was a, a success or not. I'm not sure if I will continue to read romance at all. Probably not, but maybe I'll be more open to trying a few. All right, that is all I got. Talk to you later.